Using solar power for an automatic gate saves having to run a cable from the power grid, so it's easy to install, particularly if there is no connection to a power grid nearby, and costs nothing to run, so it's good for the environment and your pocket. But how reliable is it? Well, if it has a large enough solar panel to collect energy and battery to store it, solar power can be more reliable than grid power because if there's a grid power outage, it will still work. But how do you know what size of solar panel and battery to use? The answer is to look at how much power can be collected and compare this to how much will be drawn from the battery on average. And not just when the gate is being used, but also when it's not being used, as a small amount of power is drawn even when the gate is on standby. Why is this? Well, it has a control unit that needs to remain active all the time, so it can pick up devices such as the wireless remote controls. Then when the gate is being used, it draws a lot more power, but only for a very short time, so the average amount it draws is relatively small. Looking at the amount of power a typical control unit draws, a typical battery will last around 15 days. That is if the gate isn't being used at all or being charged. Control units that are optimized well for solar can last up to 40 days, so don't need a large solar panel or battery. Getting back to the typical control unit and adding the amount of power drawn when the gate is used say 10 times a day, this reduces the amount of time the battery will last to about 10 days. And if optimized well for solar, this will be around 15 days. Now adding a typical solar panel to charge the battery, in full sun a whole day's power draw is recovered in less than 2 hours per day. On cloudy days there will still be some charge, but it may not be enough to maintain reliable operation of the gate for more than a couple of weeks. Although there only needs to be some brighter sun periods to extend this and a day or two of full sun will completely charge the battery. The charging of the battery is taken care of by a solar charge controller. There are different types available from simple low cost controllers to more advanced but expensive controllers called MPPT that charge the battery more efficiently in cloudy weather. For smaller solar systems, like those used for automatic gates, it is generally better value for money to double the size of the solar panel than go to an MPPT charge controller. So if you're in a climate that gets no more than a week of dark grey weather in a row, a 20 watt solar panel and 9 amp hour battery will work reliably. This is assuming your gate isn't really heavy and is used less than 10 times a day. For gate control units that are optimized well for solar, a 10 watt solar panel and 7 amp hour battery may be all that is needed. If you can get more than a week of dark grey weather in a row, have a larger gate, or the gate gets a lot of use, then a 40 watt solar panel and 18 amp hour battery or larger would be better. Another situation where a larger solar panel and battery is needed is if other devices such as an intercom are added that draw extra power but aren't well optimized for solar. To cope with this, the solar panel and battery need to be increased in size by an amount that depends on how much extra power draw there is. 
To find how much power a device draws, look at its specifications for the number of watts or milliamps it uses. If you can't find these, beg, steal or borrow a multimeter and connect this up to read the direct current milliamps the device draws. Every extra 25 milliamps of current drawn requires an additional 20 watt solar panel and 9 amp hour battery to keep the gate working reliably. And that's in a warmer climate. Double this for a colder climate. Which is the same as 300 milliwatts at 12 volt DC. Devices such as safety photocells should be wired so they are powered up only when the gate is operated so no extra solar panels or batteries are required. Some gate control units have a connection for this but if they don't there is normally a connection somewhere that can be used such as a timed output for a light or lock. Devices such as digital keypads should be wireless and run off a battery of their own so they don't draw any power off the automatic gate. These generally last six months to two years before the battery needs to be replaced. The charge controller must also be able to handle a larger solar panel. If upgrading to 40 watts with a 24 volt system, a standard 1.5 amp charge controller will be fine but a 12 volt system will require a 3 amp charge controller. Any larger than this and a 10 amp or even a 20 amp PWM charge controller is necessary. One thing I have seen installers do is forget about the charge controller, thinking that the battery will charge better without one and assume that the charge controller wastes some of the power. This is not the case as the charge controller will deliver just as much power when needed but once the battery is charged will back off so it doesn't overcharge the battery which can result in the battery leaking hydrogen gas into the control box which when combined with oxygen from the air and sparks from the electronics can make a nice bomb. I've been called out to a job where this has happened where all that was left was broken bits of the base of the box attached to the wall and the rest spread around the property. It's also important that the solar panel actually gets sun on it. If there's a lot of shade around the gate, the solar panel should be moved to where there is more sun. A low voltage cable can be run back to the gate. Sliding gates may also be solar powered even if they are quite large gates up to 2 ton. If you wish to learn more about automatic gates, there are more videos on my channel and many more to come. So if you want to see these, I invite you to subscribe. Thanks for watching.